It's good to see you all this afternoon on this uh, rather difficult day for many people. So we've got a sense of we've got a sense of hope up there, I think, because the rest of it's going to be pretty, pretty wild. So we'll pick up some of the other mixture that I've put over it. I won't go out too far that direction, I don't think. And I'm just being very careful here that um, this doesn't go down over the white area. What is the color you put on first? Well, that's the Naples yellow. This is, um, this is the mixture of Payne's Grey and some Burnt Umber. And I know dropping in some uh, Starlo Blue, and as you can see, it, it's uh, going quite wild at the moment. <laughs> Take that out. And you, you've got to sort of be uh, pushing it around very quickly and, and very aware of um, what's happening in all directions. This is yellow ochre I'm putting in now. A lot of people don't like yellow ochre. Um, because it's it's more opaque, of course, than uh, raw sienna, which is a very close sort of alternative. Take take some colour out on these rocks where these rocks are glistening in the uh, in the light. Just wanting to emphasize this ridge coming down using the side of the brush to get more of a, a softer edge to it. But it'll, it'll have a soft edge anyway because it's going into a wet area. So just leave that. Paints gray and some solo blue. So the... I love this... Uh, effect of dropping in some yellow ochre into the wet wash whilst it's still wet. With uh, cascades and waterfalls, uh, the way to capture them really is, uh, is, is contrasts and you'll have some of the rocks coming in front of the water and they'll be hard edged, uh, whereas when you have the water in front of the rocks or coming down over the rocks, then that part will be soft edged. And Again, using the brush on its side. Uh, just dropping in some uh, light red. As I said, a, a bit of light red in the foreground really does uh, bring it forward. And of course, around the focal point, it's not a bad idea to put in some uh, some warmer, more brighter colours. A few little dabs of uh, light red here and there. Uh, back to the yellow ochre. So that sort of uh, has a, a middle band there then to link the waterfall with, with the background. Just a little bit too strong. So what I will do is uh, wet this. Soften it down a little bit. And then drop some yellow ochre into, uh, into that metal. Uh, take some more of the harshness out, out of it. I put a, a, a dark bit in and then soften it off with just water. 
so that it's not too strident all the way across. I don't want uh, hard lines all the way around something. We don't want it to look as though it's a stamp that's been stuck on there with hard edges all around. I try to uh, soften off the uh, the edges in different places, and uh, you will hear me talk about this softening off all the time. It gets a bit boring after a while, but it's so useful. So. Water on the brush, softening it off. I don't want too hard an edge appearing there. A little bit more light red. So what, what I'm doing is painting negatively, painting the dark bits in to highlight the light water. And this is where I've got the really strong uh, dark contrast. The, the rock at the top, of course, is sticking out of the water. As it gets lower down, it goes into the, uh, the water. So burnt uh, so umber and some Zalo blue in there. And then I can work out, I've got some uh, heather. Strengthen this rock a bit. And this needs to be even darker. It's dried a little bit now, so I can uh, add a bit more to it. A dry brush across there. That is where there's hardly any water on the brush at all. The number one rigger. Probably I've lost all the paint of it. <laughs> uh, just some vegetation coming out from the side. It's nice to break up some of the um, uh, edges of the waterfall with um, this sort of thing.